بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات وأصلي وأسلم على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن وله In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, dear respected brothers and sisters, I greet you in the Islamic way, so peace be with you or on you. And today is the day we have been waiting for. The guest speaker, Brother Hudayfa Abdul Rahim, who really doesn't need my introduction to him because he's very well known. But I thought I would just make a quick you know, review and certain uh, uh, glimpses about his efforts for the sake of Islam. May Allah reward him. أيها الإخوة والأخوات هذا هو اليوم الذي كنا ننتظره فضيف الشرف الشيخ حذيفة عبد الرحيم والذي في غنى عن التعريف إلا أن هناك بعض الوقفات في حياته أريد أن أشير إليها على عجل لكي تعرفوا مكانة هذا الرجل وتستفيدوا منه برضر حذيفة عبد الرحيم لد أن هي باس ترو a lot of special uh, steps and stations. He uh, was born as a Roman Catholic in the United States. Then he didn't find kind of self-satisfaction and contentment, so he moved to be, uh, or he tried uh, Buddhism, and uh, for some times he lived with that, but he didn't feel uh, satisfied, he didn't, he didn't feel the special vacuum uh, in his life. And he was not, you know, just an ordinary average uh, Roman Catholic. He was an altar boy uh, in the church. And he was longing to be a priest. But the uh, celibacy uh, of priesthood deterred him from becoming a priest. Sheikh Abdurrahim, Hudayf Abdurrahim, لم تكن حياة عادية فقد مر بمحطات روحية أو روحانية متعددة. ولد كاثوليكي في الولايات المتحدة ثم لم يجد ما يشبع نهم الروحي فاتجه إلى البوذية ولم يجد ما يبحث عنه أيضا ولم يكن نصرانيا عاديا بل كان خادما للكاهن كان له منصب كنسي كان ما يسمى أولتر بوي خادما للكاهن الأولتر كما تعلمون والمذبح في الكنيسة يسمونه المذبح ثم كان يتطلع لأن يصبح كسيس أيضا لولا أن الحياة أو الرهبنة أو عدم التمكن من الزواج لم يجعله يواصل لكي يصبح كسيس He came to know about Islam in a place that you can never imagine It is in the North Pole And what is amazing also the translation of the Holy Quran that he got, it was given to him by a non-Muslim. Look how fate, subhanAllah, how fate works, you see. He was introduced to Islam, he was given this uh, translation of the Quran by a non-Muslim. And subhanAllah, uh, or rather, rather, you know, uh, in, in the ship, this man had the translation of the Holy Quran, and also he introduced him to the book of Malcolm X, Roots where Huxley wrote about the life of the late, very well known, may Allah make him in paradise, Malcolm X, or Malik Shabazz, as you know. And uh, this is how he came uh, to know about Islam. للغرابة أيها الإخوة والأخوات أنه عندما أنه تعرف عن الإسلام وهو في القطب الشمالي من الكرة الأرضية وكان يعمل في البحرية الأمريكية وكان في السفينة لفترة طويلة تتعدى شهور والعجيب في الأمر ولكن قضاء الله وقدر أبى إلا أن يتعرف هذا الرجل على الإسلام ليكون ما هو عليه على ما هو عليه في هذا اليوم الداعية المشهور فلا تستغربون تستغربون عندما أخبركم أنه في قصة والتي أنصحكم أن تسمعوها وفي شريط كامل لهذا الشيء تعرف أو الذي قدم له ترجمة معاني القرآن الكريم هو شخص غير مسلم على ظهر السفينة وقدم له أيضا وعرفه عن الأمريكي المشهور في الستينات الميلادية الخمسينات والستينات الميلادية مالكم إكس مالك شاباز وأعجب بقصة مالكم إكس 
رحمه الله عليه وبدا يتعرف الى الاسلام then he came to shore he came to uh, to uh, to land after this uh, you know this journey and uh, he thought well where could i meet muslim and he thought about well i should go to a jazz club to meet muslims and he happened to find a taxi driver and subhanallah this man was searching for allah from his heart so allah guided to him not an average and ordinary taxi driver but a da'i he happened to be a muslim so he told him listen take me to the nearest jazz club in order to know about islam and meet muslims so he said no we don't go to jazz clubs and these things you are looking for a mosque islamic center يقول رجعت إلى اليابسة من هذه الرحلة البحرية الطويلة وقررت لا بد أن أجتمع بمسلمين وأتعرف على المسلمين فنظرا لقصور فهمي في وضع المسلمين رأيت أن ربما أجد المسلمين في نادي لموسيقى الجاز فذهبت وبحثت عن السيارة تنقلني إلى أقرب نادي للجاز لكي ألتقي مع المسلمين وشاء الله سبحانه وتعالى لأنه كان يبحث عن الإسلام من من قلبه شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى أنه يلتقي بسائق لتاكسي سيارة أجرة مسلم وليس مسلم عادي بل داعي فقال له لن تجد المسلمين أو تتعرف عن الإسلام عن طريق نادي للجاز وإنما الذي تبحث عنه في الحقيقة هو مركز إسلامي أو مسجد ثم استضافه في بيته وأكرم إكرام أثر عليه في ذلك اللحظة Uh, this uh, taxi driver invited uh, brother uh, uh, Hudayfa to his house and he had dinner and he saw the Islamic way of life. Uh, now I come to, uh, to the local situation, to the present. Uh, brother uh, Hudayfa uh, Abdul Rahim, uh, he's not, uh, you know, he just uh, not added just a number to the Muslim. He became Muslim, alhamdulillah, that's it. No, he knew that he has a responsibility, a message to spread. So this brother, he's active in more than one field. For example, with his depth, he's concentrating on Muslim youth. Imagine, people are coming back to Islam while our youth, unfortunately, are just trying to be westernized and going away from uh, Islam. This man noticed this danger that is happening within the Muslim world. So he concentrated his effort, beside other efforts, he concentrated his effort on the Muslim youth, Muslims by birth, not merely the birth, Ras al man as we say in Arabic. This brother, the important ومن هالمكين فيها والابتعاد عن القيم الإسلامية فرأى أن يركز جهده على الشباب أو كما نقول رأس المال الشباب كيف ندعو الناس الإسلام ولا نرتب بيتنا كيف تدعو ضيف إلى بيتك قبل أن ترتب البيت فهو حريص على الشباب المسلم بالولادة والذين للأسف زلت بهم القدم وانبهروا بالغرب وما لدى الغرب من أمور أنتم في بناء عن سماعه he didn't just you know concentrate on this thing, but also he noticed that in uh, Saudi Arabian hospitals, you know, there are a lot of expatriates, non-Muslim. So he uh, tried to do a kind of orientation program. This is very important for Brother Nasser Jarallah and anyone who is related to hospitals. You see, this great man, Jazallah Khair, he concentrated on forming a program called orientation program. That is, if you have physicians, nurses you know, technicians, whatever, who are working in hospitals all over the kingdom, they need a kind, a, kind, a kind of orientation program. So with his wisdom, he tried to talk about Islam under the cover of culture, habits, and so on. And he was successful. He was successful, really. And many people came to Islam through this very uh, clever approach. هذا الرجل بعمق تفكيره وبعد تفكيره كان لو لم يكتسب نشاطه على شباب المسلمين للحفظ على رأس المال بل تعدى نشاطه إلى أن قدم برنامج التكيف orientation program التكيف لمن يعمل لجميع من يعمل في الهرم الصحي من أطباء ومرضين ومريضات وفنيين وهكذا ونجح 
نجاح كبير بإلقاء أو بإعطاء هذا البرنامج برنامج للتكييف كيف تتكيف مع الهوست كلشر كيف تتكيف مع ثقافة أو حضارة البلد المضيف وفي هذه الحالة هي المملكة العربية السعودية وعن طريق هذا الرجل هذا الأبروتش هذا المدخل قدم الإسلام بطريقة حكيمة وذكية وحقق أشياء كثيرة من هذا المنطلق جزاه الله خيرا وأخيرا لاست and finally uh, I do want to stand between you and our great uh, lecturer uh, he is active now in Huda uh, TV you know a very important Islamic uh, channel and uh, he needs a kind of all support uh, from you and all the brothers and sisters because he uh, recorded four series and he's looking for more in order to spread Islam worldwide through Huda TV so I really implore you to stand with him and to stand with Islam rather than rather than Hudayfa by doing whatever you can in order to enable Brother Hudayfa Abdul Rahim to pass the message, the Islamic message to the world through this great chance that he found through Huda TV. وأخيرا له نشاط عالمي من منطلق القناة الإسلامية المشهورة في الإنجليزية هدى TV. وسجل أربع حلقات إلى الآن ولكن يريد المزيد وهنا يأتي دوركم ودور كل المحسنين والغيورين عن الدين وأنتم في أولهم بأن نقف مع معنويا وماديا لكي يتمكن من تسجيل بقية الحلقات وينشر الإسلام للعالم. I'm sorry to take much of your time. I don't want to stand between you and our uh, guest speaker. Now I call upon Brother Hudayf Abd Rahim to stand up, and also we have a special welcome for uh, our sister, his wife, who accompanied him all the way from Riyadh. So again, uh, I call upon the sisters, you know, to uh, give our sister, the wife of Brother Hudayf Abd Rahim, her due respect and hospitality because she deserves it. She is really on that say that they say, uh, behind, I will not say, I will say besides every great man, there is a great woman. And uh, the uh, wife of uh, Brother Hudayfa is one of those great women. May Allah bless her and bless all uh, pioneers, sisters who are really trying to encourage uh, their husband, their relative to embrace Islam, or to, to uh, do da'wah for Islam. And they themselves are doing great da'wah for Islam. Brother Hudayfa, please welcome to me. السلام عليكم. 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 I'm, I'm very honored. And I think the word in Arabic is Tashrafana. I'm very honored to, uh, to stand here before you. And I'm even more honored to be able to say Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa And to understand the meaning of this. Um, it, is, it is a great honor to be a Muslim. It's a great honor to be a brother to you. And alhamdulillah, to be able to bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Really, it is so great. People ask me, you know, brother, how did you, you know, when you became Muslim, how did you feel? You know, said, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning after being sick? You know, and you wake up well. Or those of you who are wearing glasses, you wear glasses, you know. Do you remember what it was like before you had the glasses and then when you got the glasses, how well you could see? You know, really, to be able to say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, it is the greatest thing in the world. And I am happy to be of one of the one billion people who say this. Um, you know, it is an honor, it is a total honor to know who the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who the Prophet Muhammad was, and what he did for the whole world. And we are, we are the Ummah of Muhammad. You know, Alayhi Salaam. And we follow his footsteps as close as we can. This is better. Okay. Can I stand here, please? Okay, I can stand here. Play. 
So today, what I'm going to do, I have a skit. A skit is just a small, like, play. I have a skit, and I have three stories. The title of my talk is to say, to say, even if it's only one eye, to say something good, even if it's only one eye. Okay? So for my skit, I'm going to need a volunteer. Someone who knows about Christianity. Is there someone who... I need a... I, I'm going to need that microphone. I'm going to need that microphone. I'm going to need that for my... So, okay, so what I'm going to do, I need a volunteer. So we're going to have one skit, which is going to take 15 minutes, and then I'm going to tell you three stories. After we do this, I want you to be able to explain to me how all these are connected to tell the people, even if it's only one eye. So who's going to be my volunteer? Who knows a little bit about Christianity that can come? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to act as if I'm a Christian. And I'm going to give this person 15 minutes to convince me to become Muslim. And we're going to clock it. The clock is there. I'm going to give 15 minutes. Because my, my lecture is only until 6.15 before the, before the dawn. So I have to break it down 15, 15 minutes. And, and the doctor, he's very punctual about time. This, this man is taught an American about time. <laughs> He says 11 o'clock, he means 11 o'clock, not 11.01. Alhamdulillah. And he says that Muslims should respect time, and we should. You know, we just, sometimes we just say, okay, um, what time are we going After Maghrib. Well, you need better Isha. Better Isha. Okay, well, what time after Isha? Yeah, better Isha. I mean, come on, you know, you know, after Isha. Exactly what time after Isha, you know? You know, around, you know, around that time after Isha, you know? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll meet you after Isha, you know? And the guy comes every one hour after, two hours after. Ali, the dinner's finished. What happened? Well, after you told me after you show. <laughs> okay, who's going to be? That's, I understand that. That's why I'm here. This is why I'm here. I just need one. I need one volunteer, please. He would just act to convince. Who can do it? You can do it? Okay, come on down. Come on! What's your name? Ashraf. Ashraf. Okay. Ashraf. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. I need to put on mine.
You keep your religion to yourself. I'm a Christian, and I love Jesus, and I'm not going to change. And he'll tell you that in the beginning. So what you need to do is to go through the back door. Talk to him about your culture. Go through the way of culture. You know, take the time to invite them to your home. Especially sisters, it's really good that if you, if you, if you know someone at the, where you work at the hospital or something, it's always good to invite them to your home. Because they don't realize really who you are. And once they come to your home and they see that you know you have a family just like they do, you have brothers and sisters just like they do, and you you know you eat, you, you know, you, you you live just the way almost the way they do, it makes it a little bit more understanding to them. And it's through character. It's through character that you will guide the people to this time. It's through character. Try not to debate. Try not to debate. And when you do talk to them, ask them, what do you know about Islam? What do you know about Islam? Tell me, what do you know about Islam? Oh, well, I know you Muslims can have, can have 100 wives. You know, you can have 100 wives. If you believe and you worship Muhammad, Muhammad is your God. And you have a book called the Koran. And the Koran is, is, is the words of Muhammad. He wrote them like in poetry. Right? And, and, and that you believe in you believe in, in terrorism, you believe in killing people no matter if they're innocent. Like this, this is what they this is what they believe. So if you start from there, you start from there. First you say, okay, okay, first we don't, you know, we don't worship Muhammad. Then explain to them what Muhammad is. And only give them a little bit at a time. And be careful for the books. Please, because we always we give, oh, take this book, oh, take this book, take this book, take this book. We always give them books. You know what they do with their books? You know what they do with those books? They take them and put them in the, either put them in the trash can or they have a box. They have a box. They just throw it in the box. And they leave it there. Okay. So I told you one skit. Thank you very much, Ash, for participating. Thank you. Did very well. Thank you. Didn't convince them about Islam, but you did well. Um, the next, the story, the first story I want to tell you is about Shaitan, about Iblis. When God created Adam, Iblis was he was Az Azia, his name was Azia, 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 or something like that. Azia, Azia. I'm not, maybe not pronouncing it right. Allah, He created the angels from what? From light. He created the angels from light. He created the jinn from a smokeless fire. And He created Adam from what? From dirt. He made created him from dirt. Okay? Yes. Now, the Christians believe that the devil was a fallen angel. We know that when Allah created the angels, the angels do not have a free will. The angels do not have a free will the way we do. They only do. Allah creates them and they do, without question, because they don't have a will. They just do. This is what I'm supposed to do, this is what I do. The angels sit there and they do they, they the angels that, that bring the rain. They just do what they're told to do. But the jinn, right, we believe that the jinn lived on the earth before Adam. And Iblis was one of them. And he was special. He was special. You know, he, he was very clever. He was very handsome. Yeah? And he was special. Because he was a jinn that was allowed to share in heaven. He could mingle with the angels. He was allowed to mingle with the angels. His worship was so, what's the word I want to use, so purified that Allah allowed him to mingle with the angels. So then when, when God created Adam, 
Maybe that added was very long. Very strange. He created Adam, he molded him, he let, he let him stay before he put this, his soul into him. And he used to come and the hate, the hate has started building up inside of him. Right? Because he knew this was something. He knew this was something. Yeah? So he used to, you know, he used to walk around Adam. He needs to look. And he says, what is this piece of dirt? What is this piece of dirt? Yeah, and he went inside him, came out, and said, this is guy's power. But dirt. This is what happens to us sometimes. We, we start to, as my mother would say, we start to smell ourselves. You see, we get, I'm, I'm Dr. So-and-so. You know me? My name is <coughs> Dr. Ahmed. Ahmed, excuse me? <coughs> Ahmed, come over. Excuse me? Dr. Ahmed, son. My name is Dr. Ahmed. Oh, sorry, Dr. Ahmed. Oh. You know, we, we get, you know, we, you know, when we get into a position, you know, you get into a position, or take, say, like an example, you, you start a job, you and a, you and a friend, you and a friend come together and start a job together. Your friend gets the supervisor position. And you start at the same time, but now by some luck, whatever you want to call it, he gets the supervisor position. See how he changes? He changes on you, you know? Now he's a supervisor. So now, he's walking around Adam and he's saying, man, this is a piece of dirt. And he's, and he's, starting, he's, starting, he's starting to grow inside of him. Then Allah blew life into Adam. And when he blew life into Adam, he told the creation to bow down to Adam. Man was there, everybody. He please. <laughs> Me? He said, 
let me show you how grateful this piece of dirt is to you. Let me show you. Because I know that he's not going to do what you ask him to do. Let me show you. So Allah says, you have been of those who have been bepraised. So now, Iblis has until when? He has all the time in the world. He has all the time in the world. What was that word I asked you about? Is is stuck? Is uh, was it, is it's the word I asked you today? Is stuck. What does that mean? Is stuck. In English, it's translated as to slowly bringing you in to befool you slowly. That's what it means. To befool you slowly. Not at one time. Slowly. And Christians, they believe that Jesus, that they believe that that the devil is stupid. No way, Jose. The devil is not stupid. He was never stupid. Remember, because he was blessed to be able to mingle with the angels. He was clever. He was smart. He was smart. And he still is smart. And he fools us. And this is the reason why Allah stand Allah says that he, he says, when he told, when, when Iblis says, okay, now that you praise me, now that you've given me to Yom, to Yom Akiyama, now that you've given me the time, let me show you how grateful this dirt is. Let me show you. And Allah says, all those but those who believe in me. All those but those who believe in me. You will fool many of them. But those who believe in me will have my protection. How many of you like roaches? <clears throat> you know roaches uh, in Arabic? Sir salt, sir salt. How many of you like them? Sisters, how many of you like the roaches? Raise your hand. Nobody like roaches? Such still. Such still. Such still. Here's a roach. Nobody like roaches? Nobody. How about, okay, how about the little, the little one? The little, the little beautiful one? The little pretty one? The little one? Don't you like, don't you, don't you like little roach? You like little roach? No? The little one? The real cute one. You don't like it? Of course not. We see a roach, you see a little one, you want to kill it. Would you invite that roach to come and have dinner with you? Oh, come on, roach. You're my friend. Have some dinner. Of course not. As much as we hate roaches, that's as much as shaitan hates us. And more. Because look what he lost. He lost mingling with the angels. He lost the respect of Allah. He lost everything because of this piece of dirt. This piece of dirt. He lost everything. And this is why Allah says that he is an open enemy to us. He is an open enemy. What does an open enemy mean? Does anyone explain what open enemy means? Forever. Forever. Possible. Maybe one day he may become a friend? No? No. No way. He will hate us until Allah lies. He will hate us. <clears throat> and he wants no good for us at all. At all. And you tell me now how confused man is and now we have men who actually worship the devil. There are people, there are people in the world that worship the devil. They worship him they believe that he is their Lord and their Savior. And he's confused them that much that they believe in him in that way. 
And believe me, it goes way beyond our understanding. This is what he does. And the friends that he has. And the friends that he's made of men. It really, it goes way beyond our understanding. So much so that we don't understand the things that we do. So now, Adam and Eve are in paradise. And they're enjoying themselves. <clears throat> they're having a good time. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. But then the devil comes and he says, Yeah, don't you want to taste that fruit? Yeah, just go over to that tree. Yeah, I like Chinese food. Hold on. 
Right? When we pray, He comes to us. Right? I call it Jihad al Fajr. Waking up for Fajr. I have three clocks and my wife. Alhamdulillah. I have three clocks and my wife. And they, they all kind of help me. But sometimes Shaitan get in. Right? The, the, alarm, the alarm goes off. You hear the alarm. The alarm goes off. You turn the alarm off. Hey, Muhammad, come on, man. You just, you just want to sleep. I just take five minutes. Just go ahead. We got five minutes, you know. It's about the time that the calm is not until 30 minutes. Just go ahead and lay there for a few more minutes, man. It ain't nothing wrong with you taking another, just a few minutes. Just go ahead and just lay there for a few more minutes, man. Come on, you gotta get some sleep. I mean, how you gonna have a whole day? You don't know me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You get up, you know, you get up, and you say, okay, God, I'm late, and get up, make it, we'll do it, get up, you know, 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 Question. For those of our brothers who have a, a bad habit of smoking, we know that smoking is bad. We know it. Smoking is bad. It kills, like, even on the pack of cigarettes, right? This will kill you. If you smoke this, this will kill you. But how many people? <coughs> Can you show me? No, man, it's okay, man. I understand. I, you know, I just got this bad. And they know it's going to kill you. But Shaitan says, oh, just one more. Just one more. Just one more. He's an open enemy to us. And we need to be careful for him. And we need to rely on the lost man to Allah for everything. And he brought, he gave the Prophet Muhammad السلام, his sunnah. And all we have to do is do your best in following the sunnah as best as you can. And when you slip and fall, you ask Allah to forgive you. You ask Allah to forgive you. I know sometime, a while back when I went home, this young guy who took shahada, MashaAllah, you yeah, that that fire of Islam. And you know, the new Muslims, you know, they just go, oh, Islam. <laughs> I'm so happy, Islam, Islam. Islam. So, you know about Islam? You know, they really tell everybody about Islam, MashaAllah. Today, this uh, Filipino was Muslim for like three weeks, and he brought a friend into Islam already. So he's so happy, you know, that, you know, when you become Muslim, he's so happy. So I, I remember this brother, you know. So I go away and I come back, <coughs> hoping to see him. <coughs> I said, oh, where's Ahmed? Oh, Ahmed's back on the corner, man. He's back using drugs again. It's because nobody followed up with him. And because, you know, I mean, the thing is, you know, if, if you do it, you know, you do it one time. Shaitan fools you. You do it, you know, you're so depressed and just go ahead and do this thing, it's okay. Just this one time, it's not gonna hurt you. You know, you need it just to pick you up. And Shaitan can tell you all sorts of things. Like he told Adam. He said, go ahead, eat from this fruit, it's okay. It will give you knowledge. It will let you live forever. And after so many whispers, after he was in paradise, he was there and he slipped. He ate from the fruit. And you know what he said on the way out? He said, Ya Allah, he never told me that he would lie to me. He swore. He said, well, lie. He swore on you, Allah. He swore by you. He swore by you. Adam was innocent. He never had nobody lie to him before. Now, how many of us tell lies? <coughs> and shaitan is the biggest of the liars. 
He will promise you everything, and at the end, he will turn his back on you. As we say in the street, word. Word, brother, word. And that's what's going to happen. So that's the story about Iblis. So we need to be careful for him. And when we do sin and we make a mistake, seek Allah's forgiveness because he will forgive you. The next story I want to tell you is a story about Jesus. And he was on a he was on a journey. And he met this one man on his journey. And the man asked Jesus, Can I travel with you? And Jesus said, Yes. So they're traveling. They come to a river. And Jesus, he walks on the water. He walks across the water. He tells the man to follow. At first, the man's scared. I can't walk on the water. Trust me. Walk with me. Jesus takes his hand and he walks across the water. They come to a gazelle. Jesus, he calls the gazelle to him. The gazelle comes, takes a knife, Bismillah, he kills the gazelle. They cut off his leg, they cook it. They eat from it. Together, they eat from this, this meat, they eat from this meat. After they've eaten from the meat, Jesus takes the bone, puts it back on the, on the, on the animal, he says, in the name of Allah, walk. The animal gets up and walks and goes away. They come to a baker. The baker gives them some bread. The baker gives them some bread. They sit down and they, they eat the bread. But there's still one loaf left. Jesus goes away to go to the, take care of some business. He goes away, he comes back. And the loaf of bread is gone. And he says, where's the loaf of bread? The man says, I don't know. I don't know. He says, but it was here. And it's, now it's gone. He said, where's the loaf of bread? He says, I don't know. He said, okay. So they come. They go. Then they cross, uh, they cross the valley. I'm trying to get the story right. They go across the valley. And then I think there's a lion that, that comes. And Jesus stops the lion from attacking them. And after the man sees this, Jesus asks him, he says, now tell me, where's the loaf of bread? And the man says, I don't know. And they travel. And they get to a spot that now they, there's some dirt. So Jesus makes three piles of dirt. He makes the three piles of dirt. And he turns the dirt into gold. He turns these three piles of dirt into gold. So Jesus says, you see this? He says, now please, tell me, who took the bread? Where's the bread? He says, if you tell me who took the bread, I will give you all three stacks of this gold. He says, I took the bread. So Jesus said, okay, this is for you. Take it. And Jesus left. Now this man, he has three stacks of gold. Remember, they were walking. They were walking all this way. And now there's three stacks of gold sitting there. Now this man has a slight dilemma, right? How are they going to carry this three stacks of gold? How are they going to carry this? He's thinking. And while he's thinking about how he's going to carry these three stacks of gold, three people, three bandits come. Three bandits come. Yeah, three bandits come. This guy is one with three stacks of gold. What do you think these bandits are thinking? Oh, man, this is for us. We're going to cut your throat, man, throw you away. This is for us. And he says, well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, let, let, let me do this. I'll share it with you. I'll share it with you, he said, to the three bandits. I'll share this with you. 
And they think, is it okay? But he says, but I'm hungry. And aren't you hungry? Why don't you send one of your men to the city to, to, bring, to bring a cart, to bring a cart and to bring some food? To bring a cart and to, and, and, and to bring some food so that we can eat. And then we can put the gold into the cart and then we can go to the city and we'll split the, split the money up and we'll go into the city. So it's a good idea. So they sent the one to the city. Now the three are sitting around the gold and they're thinking, you know, there's uh, four of us and there's uh, only three stacks of gold. Now, uh, really, how, how well do you know that guy you just sent to the city? I mean, how close is he to you? I mean, like, is he really your friend, friend? I mean, or can we just, you know, like, um, you know, can we just, like, kill him when he comes back, you know? We just kill him, and then each of us can share the gold. We have the food, we have the cart. We take the gold, one stack for you, one stack for me, one stack for you. And we can do it like that. And so they think, yeah, that's a good idea. Shaitan. That's a good idea. And so while this guy, he's on his way, he's, he's going to town to get the cart and, 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 and to get the food. <coughs> he gets this idea, right? See how you get these, like, bling, idea, bling. Now, what do you think? Why are you going to share all that gold with those three guys? Why are you going to do that? Look, all you got to do, all you got to do, put some poison in the food, let them eat the food, let them die, and you got all three stacks for yourself. Ain't that, ain't that cool? God, that's the best idea I've had all day! <laughs> I'm going to put some poison in this food. I'm going to give it to these guys. They're going to eat it and they're going to die. And I'm going to have all the gold to myself. <laughs> yeah. Aren't I smart? Mm. He puts the poison in the food. He comes back with the car. Hey, guys. Hey, you came back with the food in the car. Great. That's wonderful. Guys, Nice. Come on over here. We're gonna do, put, the, put the gold in the cart. Just sit down and have it. Eat the food. We're hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. Great. Come on. Sit down. The fire warm himself. He sits down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I thought you got all my friends. Why are you gonna kill me? He dies. Okay. Great. Now he's dead. We got the car, we got the food, let's eat. Let's eat, okay, let's eat, let's celebrate. So they eat the food. <clears throat> they all die. <laughs> One, two, three, four bodies. And the car. And the gold. Jesus comes back with his companions. And he tells them. He says, look. This is the way of the world. Be careful. This is the way of the world. Be careful. That's my second story. Now remember, you need to tie all this in for me. My last story is the story of Abraham. Abraham, alayhi salam, bring the 
father. He brought us off to us. You know how old he was? No, you know how old he was when he, when he first uh, received the revelation? Hmm? Yeah, 15. This is a young boy. This is a young boy. MashaAllah. This is a young boy. And the other thing, you know, a lot of the Sahabas, a lot of the Sahabas were young. A lot of the Sahabas were young. You know, Zaid, Ibn Zaid, yeah. Osama, Ibn Zaid. Right. Seven Ali. He was tough, man. Ali was tough. Long sword that looked at the split in him, and he was like, MashaAllah. Who was that? Who was that guy? He was, he was going to fight. Who was that guy he was going to fight? Uh, what was his name? They're in, the, they're in the battle of... Uh, no, it's the battle of Bethlehem. What's the battle of Bethlehem? He called... He, I forgot the man's name. I forget his name. He called... They were going to have a duel. And this guy was a really big guy. He was a really, he was a big, one, of the, one of the famous warriors from Quraysh. Yes. What was his name? What did Prophet Muhammad advise him to not go? Not go. He said, don't go. He said, he, he, he said, he said, who will go out and fight this man? And Ali said, I will. And he said, but this is, but this is so-and-so and so-and-so. Yes, Abu Ali. Abu Ali. Abu Ali. Abu Ali. Abu Yes, he kept saying, but this is Abu Ali. And Ali said, what? So what? Let me go. He said, let me go. Let me take care of this. Prophet said, no, 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 this is Abu Ali. Ali said, can you imagine, he's just a young guy, and he took care of him too, didn't he? Mashallah. So, it's not the age. You know, it's not the age. Um, one point I wanted to mention. Um, there's a lot of controversy about now, especially about the Prophet Muhammad and how many wives he had, and the fact that he married uh, Aisha at such a young age, and he consummated the marriage at such a young age. You see, one argument, is, uh, I got this from Brother Bilal Phillips, which was an interesting argument. During those days, it was okay. That was a part of their custom. They did that. They married women young like that. There was no, nothing wrong with it. Because if it was something wrong with it, wouldn't the Quraysh have said something about Oh, Muhammad, look at you marrying some little girl. Right? Because they were looking for anything. They were looking for anything to blame the Prophet Muhammad. Anything. And don't you think, if it wasn't their custom, if it wasn't what they do, if it wasn't what they do, if it wasn't what they did, wouldn't they say, Ya Muhammad, how are you going to marry such a young girl? It's their custom. It was what they did. It was the way. And it was all right. And we can even take it back to, do you know how old? Do you know how old Mary was when she died, when she received her pregnancy? The mother of Jesus. Does anyone know how old she was? She was between 14 and 16 years old. And do you know the man who took responsibility for her? Do you know how old Joseph, the father, was? He was 92 years old. He was 92 years old. So when those Christians start saying, oh, look at your Muhammad, he does it. And you say, well, look at your Joseph and Mary. Joseph was 92 years old. He married this girl 14 years old. Huh? The Right? Anyway. Abraham, after he, you know, he lived, he, you know, he did the, in the fire, he was in the fire, and Allah saved him from the fire. And Abraham was what? He was the Khalid of Allah. Can you imagine being a friend of Allah spent out? What bigger wasata would you need than that? <laughs> SubhanAllah. To be the Khalid. One day, Abraham says, Ya Allah, how is it that you give light to the dead? How is it that you give life to the dead? How do you do that? Allah says, well, Abraham, do you not believe? 
اذا انت تمتع لنا تو بوت ذا ذا سيرتينتي ان ماي هارت شو اي بليف يو بروت مي ذو ذا فاير يو سيف ماي لايف سيلف اي بليف بس اي جست وونت تو نو هاو دو يو دو ات He says, okay, Abraham. And this is, this is interesting because Abraham had a real close relationship with animals, right? When, this, when he was going to sacrifice his son, he sacrificed him. And the thing about animals, right, how close we are to animals. We love animals. I remember one Eid, you know, you're supposed to get the sheep and you're supposed to bring it to your house like a week before the Eid or two weeks before the Eid. You're supposed to bring it to the house and feed it and take care of it. Oh, boy. We brought the sheep to the house, and we gave it a name, Adnan. Oh, boy. It was really nice. Beautiful sheep. And we were feeding it, and the kids were just riding on its back and playing with it. Oh, Adnan, Adnan. We love Adnan. Okay, now it's eat time. Oops. No, Daddy. You can't kill Adnan. No, Daddy. You, you can't kill Adnan. You can't, you can't do that. Well, baby, I mean, this is why we, no, daddy, we don't kill that guy, we love that guy. I said, you know, how do you, you know, how do you tell your daughter, you know, you say, hey, baby, you know, we got, you know, we got to eat this thing, you know, it's food. No, daddy, meat is at the store. This is at night. They want me to go to the store and get meat from the store. No, no, kill that guy. So daddy goes out to the, goes out to the, to the garage with the, the, the sheep pen and I'm buying the sheep. Alhamdulillah, we, we did that nine <coughs> sometime later. <clears throat> but how we, 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 we get attached to animals. So he said, Yeah, Ibrahim, take four birds. Take four birds and train them. Train them to know your face. Train them to, to recognize your voice. Train them to love you. Train them to love you. So he takes these four birds. And he trains them. And he goes to love them. And they love him. And then he says, okay, now you sacrifice these birds. Abraham, without question, he killed the four birds. He put their heads on, on the table. He put them in a place. He took the birds. He took off their feathers. He took off their feathers. And then he cut the birds up. He sliced them up like, he cut them up to they were like, you know, hamburger meat? You know, like a grind beef? You know, it's like patty that you make patty with? He ground, he <coughs> all four of them. And then he mixed them all together. He, he, now what do you do? He took the bird and took off the bird, four birds. He takes the bird and what you got? You got some mush. You know mush? You got some mush. Then he takes all four of the birds. And he, he mix it up. And he says, okay, now you take this, and you take a portion, and you take it to the furthest mountain, to the four mountains. You take and leave a portion there, a portion there, a portion there, a portion there. And you come back. You come back to the spot that you're at. After you do that, you call the birds to come to you. SubhanAllah. Alfred, Noor, Rose, Peter. They come, right? Right in front of his eyes. This meat that he mushed up now separates itself and comes together. Can you imagine this? This meat that he mushed up now, he sees it in front of his eyes, right there. He calls these birds to come. And now this meat, and this meat comes together, and it comes, and it all comes together right in front of his eyes. And then the, the, the bird comes together, and then all the feathers come, all the feathers, right? All the feathers, he's all over the place, all the feathers come, and they all go back to the right bird. And this is happening right before his eyes. Four birds happen right in front of his eyes. He calls the birds. How do they come to him? Do they come flying? No. 
come run, walking or running. They come walking. They come walking with no head. Because their heads are right here. With no head, they come to him. And then they take their head and put their head back on to their body. Abraham, do you now believe? La ilaha That was my last story. Now, from these, from the skit, from the three stories, how do I come to this? Someone help me put this together. Anyone can help me? How do all these connect together? Sisters? Does anyone know how we can get all these four stories together? Anybody? Nobody? How do we connect all these four stories together? These four things, how do we connect them together? Everybody was sleeping while I was talking. You sleeping while I was talking. How are you, sir? Everything's well? You doing good? Alhamdulillah. It's good to be good. It is really good to be doing good. Alhamdulillah. What is your name? Doctor? Dr. Suresh. Oh, how are you? Fine, thank you. It's good. Alhamdulillah. I need someone to help me now. Don't leave me here stranded. Don't, don't embarrass me. I need some help. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, uh, we would like to thank you for your speech and your, for uh, for your valuable uh, speech and your uh, stories. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, very vital to recognize our uh, true enemy, first of all, which is uh, a lasting enemy uh, from birth to death. And uh, we have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to believe uh, in Him. And He is, uh, uh, He forgives uh, our uh, mistakes all the time. Uh, and don't forget, as a Muslim, I, don't, I, I have to start uh, working everything good uh, and invite others to uh, be like me to survive them from uh, uh, being non-Muslims, to take them to paradise, uh, believing in uh, one uh, God, one God who is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying uh, the card of uh, entering the paradise is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is our duty as Muslims to, uh, to relieve this fact uh, and to introduce this, uh, uh, our great Islam to others. Um, but if, our, uh, if we are not uh, believing in our Islam and we are not very good enough, we can't uh, invite others to our, uh, our religion, our great religion. So this is the idea. I think uh, we have to strengthen my, uh, our uh, um, faithful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in order uh, to, to recognize uh, Iblis uh, whispers and uh, to worship our Allah ala uh, huda in afaman afama yamshi mukibban ala wajhi ahda amma yamshi sawiyan ala salatu mustaqim wa jazakallah khair shukran Thank you. Anyone else want to? Sisters? Were you all sleeping when I was talking? Anyone want to participate with me? It's okay. Yes? Don't raise a hand? No one? No one? Okay. Anybody else? Oh, great. Yes. yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, 
I'm uh, pleased uh, to be uh, in this lecture and I'm happy with your uh, speech. Uh, and uh, the values you, uh, uh, we gain from your speech is what shaitan do, what shaitan do, and uh, focus about worship. Allah Ta'ala, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ This first value. Second value, person, any person, search about mean things. Peace. Peace. Sincerity. Sincere. Security. See, okay, this is four words or five words, included in one more, one more, Islam, Islam. Third value, Tawheed. And thanks. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> okay. I'm there now. That's everyone said what was correct. Right? The first story was to understand how to talk to the non Muslim. It's very important that we use wisdom. Because believe me, on Yom Kiyama, on Judgment Day, if you think Chuck is going to say, oh, well, you know, it's okay, I'll just go to the hellfire. It's okay. I know I was a bad person. I'm going to go to hell. You know what he's going to say? Ya Allah, I knew this guy, Ahmed. I knew him. We worked together. We worked together for five years. Ten years, he never invited me to his home. He never told me anything about his Islam. And it's his fault that I did not become a Muslim. It's his fault. So you blame him. What's my proof on that? Even a drowning man will reach for a leaf if he thinks that leaf will save him. If he's drowning and he sees a little leaf, or a little, a little stick, a little stick. I'm not talking about a big ball. A little stick, he's going to reach for it. And if you think on that day, when these people, when they see the hellfire, they're not going to reach for that leaf and say, it was your fault, it was your fault, it was your fault, it was your fault, because you never told me anything about this now. SubhanAllah. Welcome. So if you if you don't if you don't think if you don't think that Chuck is not gonna say, hey, look at you, it's your fault. What I suggest that you do, um, we should stop at 630, right? Okay. So how much time do I have left? Two minutes. Okay, then I'm going to stop. Are there any questions? I can entertain. Are there any questions? Let me give the two minutes for the questions, and we can end like that, answer any questions. Are there any sisters that have any questions? You want to write them down? If you don't want to, you don't want to speak, I'm probably going to write your questions down. Anybody have any questions? <coughs> yes, brother. I just want to ask you one question. Before you embrace Islam, how do you feel? I felt good. I didn't do the good thing. And what about after, after you embrace Islam? I felt great. Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is, man, you know, when you live in ignorance, and everybody else is ignorant, you know, you live in ignorance, everybody else is ignorant, then, you know, you are happy. 
you know what I'm saying? Because um, cause the, the stages that I, I went through and everybody else around me, you know, we're all ignorant. So we're all ignorant together. It's okay. <laughs> Until the light came, you know. Until this, you know, this American Indian, the, the Native American, mashallah, he introduced me. Yeah. But when you, but when you accept Islam, man, whoa, whoa. You, do you remember what it was like before your glasses? Before you were, you remember when you, like when you didn't, when you didn't have your glasses. Remember the, the first pair of glasses you put on. You remember? How did it feel? Can't see it. Glasses. Do I have some uh, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Yes, another question? One more question? Yeah, I, I am Dr. Babas, when I told you just before that, uh -huh. you asked me. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm basically, you know, I'm a Hindu. Oh! Yes. Born Is that why you're so bright? Oh, no. Mashallah. <laughs> Born as a Hindu and brought up in Christianity, the schooling. Mm -hmm. And I'm delighted and uh, honored, uh, you know, to hear your wonderful uh, lecture on the even the skit play. And you told about, uh, you know, talk about the Saitan, the Saitan and yes. the believers. Yes. How to win against the Saitan? Are there any modalities, methods by which we can win against the Saitan? So it is, a, it is only the willpower, the mind power, or the meditation with which we can fight against the Saitan, no. uh, or what is? I'm How to win against the Shaitan? Yeah. Thank you. The way to win against Shaitan is to yes. say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That is your only protection against the Shaitan. Mm -hmm. That is your only protection. In this last, I want to ask you a question. I was watching this, uh, this one uh, YouTube. No, six, 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 six. I just, I was asking. I was watching this one. Uh, I was watching this one uh, video on the YouTube, and it was talking about religions around the world. Now I want to know, because since you're Hindu, I'm going to ask you, because I want to know. They said that it would be a holy man, he would make the idol, he would, he would create the idol, and then he would give it to the priest, and then the priest would blow, breath, blow the holy breath into the idol to give it life to be God. Is that true? Yes, actually, we have a lot of. Uh, Excuse me, I, I think uh, we have got a lot of literature uh, regarding this. Our epics and our Vedas, everything, it says that. Most of our uh, Hindu culture, we always worship idols. So that is against idol, I mean, against Islam, idolatry. Yeah. But what has been, uh, you have witnessed on YouTube. That is absolutely true. So our uh, uh, ancient stories, they will depict the same. So whatever history you have given, whatever the story has been depicted in the YouTube, it is true, but you have to believe it. So some people, they believe, some people, they don't believe it. So, but uh, according to me, idolatry, I don't believe it. Yeah, that's you. good, because that's your, that's your first step. That's your first step to your protection from shaitan. That is your first step. It's only a few more steps that you have to take to protect yourself. On your behalf, brothers and sisters, we thank uh, Sheikh Hudayf Abdul Rahim thank you very much. And uh, as usual, I request our sisters to move now to the uh, cafeteria and uh, then uh, the brothers will follow. Since we are waiting for a few minutes, I think we will entertain one question, Sheikh Hudayf. Because the sisters, we allow the sister to go first. So we have one minute for any question. Any question? The last question. Uh, my name is Muhammad Khaja, I came from India. So, sir, I analyzed my in India. There are so many Hindus and Christians they are analyzing the our Islam. Now his uh, confusion, his uh, worship with gods, 365 65 gods are there. Means there are different uh, images of the God, like uh, elephant, like uh, mouse, like uh, so many like that. So the before that, peoples are illiterate. Now the peoples are literate. Now they are analyzing what is the difference between our Allah and these 365 gods. So please, you uh, give me a definition of the to the people 
قل والله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا النار بيكوز ذيس سوره ذا ديفينيشن اوف ذا اسلام ذا تو تشيك ذا الله مينز ذي ار شوينج ان ذيس ووردز قل والله احد بيكوز الله از واحد يس ذا هول ذا هول ثينج ذا هول ثينج is that we need to believe that Allah is only one and that the Prophet Muhammad is the last Prophet Muhammad. This is the truth. And if you, there's a, there's a video you can watch from Dr. Dr. Zakir Naik. He talks about uh, Hinduism and Islam. I would suggest that you watch it. And on the last, this last minute, Yai Kwan, I remember one day, so especially when we're talking, when you're talking about Islam, you need to really be careful. Because I remember one day I went to visit a friend of mine from India, and his roommate was in the room. And somehow we, we, we talked about God. And he said, my God, I, said, I asked him, I said, well, well, you know what I'm saying? I, said, I asked him, I said, do you believe in God? He said, yes. And I said, what does your God look like? I asked him, about, he said, my God is a blue elephant. Right? When he said that, I laughed. Because I thought it was funny. Because he said his God was a blue elephant. So I started laughing. And then when I turned and I looked at him, he wasn't laughing. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And he said, yes. And he opened up his closet and he showed me a picture of a blue elephant. It had jewelry on and it was like this and had earrings and everything. And, and I felt so embarrassed. I felt so embarrassed that I laughed at his God. And you know, in Islam, we shouldn't do that. We should never laugh at someone else's God. Because what will happen if we start laughing at their God, they will curse ours. So remember that when you're talking to people about Islam, to be polite. With this, we conclude. So, we will be able to go to the Salat al Salat al Maghrib. And we will be able to go to the Salat al Maghrib. ونيابة وسمكم جميعا نتوجه بالشكر الجزيل وقبل الشكر الدعاء الخالص لفضيلة مدير عام فرع وزارة الشؤون الإسلامية والأوقاف ودعوا لشهد نطقة عسير الشيخ محمد بن سيد القحطاني على الرغم من ظروف إلا أنه زال خير تكرما من حضر ليشارككم فرحة الإنهاء هذه الدورة بعد صلاة المغرب مباشرة فله منكم ومنا جميعا صادق الدعاء أن الله يزي خير ويبارك في وقته والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله